Hi again then guys and welcome to of course another speed build in particular for Forza Horizon 4 and as I mentioned yesterday in my tune for the Bugatti Chiron which is kind of an underwhelming car let's be honest at least compared to what you think it could do this one is the exact opposite it's only gotten better I would say in terms of performance with each Forza game especially the Horizon games with the kinds of uh, engine swap that you can do for instance now this one you're looking at over 280 miles per hour so it's up there with stuff like the Koenigsegg CC8S, it's up there with stuff like the Agera RS, even pretty close to that, and it's one of the quickest cars in the game. But in particular, the funny thing is, it's one of the quickest for top speed. For acceleration, on the other hand, it's not quite as strong. Now, it's not slow. Don't get me wrong, it's not even close to slow. 2.4 seconds to 60 is not slow in any universe, and 4.6 to 100 is not slow. But that is slower than the Chiron, and I think, if I recall correctly, that might be slower than my Veyron Supersport as well. However, the trump card is it's faster than both of them for top speed. It's 10 miles per hour quicker, and in fact 12 miles per hour quicker than the Chiron, 10 miles per hour quicker than my Veyron Supersport, over 280, as I said. So, as far as the tuning goes, you want to fit it with the Supersport engine, the W16, over 1400 horsepower. You want your racing tires, brakes, suspension, transmission, diff. Basically upgrade everything to racing parts. But you don't need to fit the racing wings. That's the only thing that you don't need. Stuff like anti-roll, or not anti-roll, I should say roll cage, fitment, uh, that's optional. You don't necessarily have to do that if you don't want to. Now, as far as the gearbox, I'd recommend a final drive of 2.4. Then for the individual gears, they're pretty familiar. 2, or 2.9, I should say. 1.99, 1.5, 1.18, 0.95, and 0.77. Then as far as alignment, we do have all-wheel drive, of course. So we've got neutral camber, neutral toe, 4 degrees of caster for this build. Anti-roll, I've got on 25 and 30. Springs on 90, 145 and then the ride height as low as possible. For the dampers, we've got 10, 15, 5, and 7. Aero doesn't apply, on the front at least. On the back, you have the existing wing, which I'd recommend having as low as possible. And for the diff, I'd recommend 100% on everything, because again, like with the Veyron, like with the Chiron, it is a bit heavier, it's already all-wheel drive, so it's got that inclination toward being a bit heavier through corners. Whereas with those settings, it loosens it up a lot more. And as far as the center split, I've gone for 75%. So a little bit further to the back than we might typically have. I tend to go for 70%. So if you still find it to be too heavy, you could take it up to, say, 80, for instance. Or if you want it to have even better launch and even better off-road ability, why you'd need that, I don't know, but you never know, then you could take it down to, for instance, 70 instead. Now this one, as you can see, is Class X. You need to remove quite a few things to get it into S2 instead. You could do that, or if you want this tune straight on your car, you can just use the keywords down below in the description or use my gamer tag to find my tune on my storefront, along with well over 200 other tunes as well. But all that remains is obviously to see how quick it can actually go. Now, as you can kind of see from the replay here, off the line, it's not as quick as some others like the XJ220 or the Diablo even, but often the game will outlaunch you anyway, just arbitrarily. But with a car like this, you do need circumstances where you can make full use of that crazy top end speed. There are a few occasions where you can, but of course, not a huge amount. However, you can see from the replay here, it can go beyond the benchmark. It says 281, but it can actually do 283, which makes it, as I said, one of the quickest cars in the game. Now, I have no doubt that you could probably squeeze an extra mile per hour out of it, so of course I'd recommend playing around with the tune even more. But if you want to use this tune or grab it from my storefront, I hope you have a ton of fun with it either way, and you can click here on screen to see tons of other tunes that I've done for Horizon 4 as well. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.